recording this computer. Hey everyone, this is Rick Morgan, the comic book scientist, and I'm speaking with Big John Popico from the comic book underground in Largo, Florida. How are you doing, John? Uh, I'm hanging in there, man. Got the gloves on, the old man spectacles, doing a little prepping. <laughs> yeah. My eyes are sore too, man. I went to the uh, I went to NASA today at the Space Center and I found I didn't have my glasses. I couldn't read all the the plaques. I was having to have kids read them to me, you know. That's, my wife sort of like tuned into that because I couldn't see everything. So now I have a pair of glasses in like every room and then a pair in the cars. And you know, so she makes sure I have the old man spectacles everywhere I go. <laughs> it's good to so, hear you hear your voice and it's good to talk to you again. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know if everybody, I was going to do a YouTube video on, you know, catching up with everybody because I haven't done one in a while. And the reason for that is my health has been, you know, really bad. I was in the hospital for quite a few days and was recently diagnosed with stage one liver cancer. And so, you know, I'm, I'm holding on and I just lost my father. Um, he passed away last Sunday. So, I mean, it's, it's been a little rough for me and still trying to maintain the store which was closed for 15 days but you know I, i'm staying up man life is not going to put me down too much because i i like i tend to fight back yeah yeah man i i really i feel for you but i also know you'll be okay i understand who you are yeah so but listen i, I want to dive into some stuff if you don't mind please do let's do it okay number one um i have something for the haters all haters. It doesn't matter if it's your haters, my haters, doesn't matter. Uh, pressing and cleaning comics is subjective, just like grading comics is. It's subjective to the individual. So for someone to specifically say that what we are doing is wrong, then they obviously have no idea what they are doing. Um, because Everyone gets to the same place eventually. Some of us are already there. So how we do it is what we got comfortable in doing it that way. That's what makes us subjective. And then the people say, well, don't use a t-shirt press. Use this kind of press or this kind of press. Well, if you use a t-shirt press to press your comic books, do you know your press before you actually tell someone not to use it? Because if you've never used it, then what, what do you actually know about it? Another point I'd like to make is Immaculate. I've read some of the reviews. Some, I don't remember the guy's name and I'm not going to put him out on Shout Street, but the guy has no idea what he's talking about saying that it's full of peroxides and it's full of chemicals and all that bull crap. Number one, I use Immaculate Clean on a daily basis. Do I use other things as well? Of course I do. I've been doing this a long time, 30 years. Of course I'm going to use something else as well. But Immaculate Clean is perfectly described. It's a hand soap that doesn't clean your hands. And how do I know that? Because I tried it. It doesn't clean anything off your hands. But for some apparent reason, it loves paper fiber and it eats all that schmutz as rick likes to say off now does it take depends on how much dirt and grime are on a book silver age you got 50 years 60 years for some it's going to take a few times doing it but it does work it's been proven time and time again not only by me but by Rick himself and others. There's countless others that it's been proven. So whoever that hater is, he needs to go get a can of shut the hell up. <laughs> um, peroxide. There's a huge thing on Reddit about peroxide that if you use peroxide, it's going to make the books brittle. You have so many haters on the use of peroxide. It's going to burn it's going to make the pages brittle that's because those who think it's making the pages brittle don't know how to use it properly if you think it's going to burn then use a less dose use a 20 use a 30 don't go to the 40 
and stay just away from the 50 because you're really going to burn the hell out of something. I use a 40 pound mix because that's what I'm comfortable with. But I stop the burn by wiping it down with distilled water. So that stops the burn. It also stops the pages from becoming brittle. So again, for those of you who think you know what you're talking about, keep practicing. And I promise you, eventually you'll get there and you'll see what we're talking about. Um, your staple, you just made the staple remover, um, absolutely phenomenal invention. For those of you that did not get that, who I use clay tools because they're plastic, they don't scratch, and you can't tell that I've messed with those staples at all. But the staple remover makes my life so much easier. I don't have to pull here or push here and pry up here. It makes it just so much easier. Uh, brother, straight up two thumbs way up on that. That was killer. And that little that little tool you made is just phenomenal. Thanks. Yeah, I worked hard on that. I've actually been working on that for eight years, if you can believe it. Yeah, I mean, dude, listen, you could tell you really put your patience into it. You did your due diligence. It's absolutely sick. You could have doubled the price and I still would have bought two. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, and um, if if I had, um, oh yeah, one more thing. I got your UV uh, protectant. I call them UV shields. Sure, um, that's fine. You, you should drop that seriously. UV shields should be the name. Um, you know, have a guy holding a shield like a superhero with the sun reflecting off of it. That should be a superpower. That would be sick. Actually, that's a great idea. I'm, I'm and kind I, of and I, won't, I, I won't come after you if you use it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I applied for trademark on Slab Max. Sorry. Go ahead. Slab it, brother. Slab it. Use it. But I got them. Uh, I only have one thing to say about them, and it's not good. It really is not. Um, it's... Dude, I got those things and it took me like 30 minutes to get the white film off. Oh, yeah, that peelable film off of oh, it. Oh my God, dude. I had to like fray the, the sides just to get it off. It wouldn't come off. I was like, holy crap. But the um, but the comic book underground that you lasered into those, dude, straight props for that. That came out sick. The um the font was perfect, everything, it was just great, dude. My wife was floored. Um, she's like, we already got enough word of mouth, but thanks to Rick, we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna be the pimp of the world when it comes to UV blocking, selling these things. But um, but yeah, dude, they're absolutely another awesome invention that you've done. And I recommend anyone who displays slabs and they're in any kind of sunlight, easy to apply. I applied mine with rubber cement. That's a great idea. I put just, I used a, um, a toothpick, you know, because I used to build model cars back in the day. So I'm very used to using a toothpick and glue. So I just took a toothpick and put a very tiny drop in each, I mean, a tiny drop in each corner. And then I pushed it on and it spread it out. You can't even see it. Because, you know, it spreads the, Rubber, it, it spread it so thin that you, you can't you can you can't even see it. It might distort it a little bit, but it's so far up in that corner you can't even tell. And I let it completely dry, peeled it off, not a problem. Just put my plastic tool, popped it, and then I just rolled the rubber cement right off, no residue. That's a great idea. Are you talking that mucilage stuff that you get with like yeah. the brush? So, so the reason I went with the, uh, I tried a lot of different methods of adhesion and I was originally going to spray them, and all, but I wanted to keep a small air gap between the board and the plastic because I don't want the plastic to marry. I don't want the plasticizers in that, uh, it's called PEG, the PEG case that they form to marry. Uh -huh. So I want you to be able to get them off and get them on another one. So I really wanted a tenth of a millimeter air gap so they wouldn't like permanently affix. So you could, the idea is you could rotate them to different books. And I was yeah. worried that if it was too close that they would make a Newton ring and it would uh, marry to it. Yeah, no, mine, mine, um, mine have plenty of air. You know what I mean? But it's not like, 
Uh, I, I mean, my homemade measurement, you know, it's like a zillimeter away, you know what I mean? But there's not enough room for any kind of moisture to get back up in there because it's still got, you know what I mean? So you can still feel the flow. If you put a fan on it, you can still feel it on the other side through that little gap there. You know what I mean? I mean, people can add a little more, you know what I'm saying? Rubber some, I just chose to do it my way. Sure. And, you know, one thing that's always amazing to me, John, is that what you were saying earlier is that there's no right or wrong way. Well, it's not right. There's not a best way to do things. It's the best way for you. You and I have both been doing this for decades, right? Oh, yeah. But you and I, we've, and over many conversations, I think it's true, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, that we've come to do the same things different ways, right? And we end up doing the same stuff the same way because we just and sort we of- get the same, And we get the same result. Yeah. Which yeah, so we, we, kind started of in different, on. we started different, but we got to where we wanted to go, but we got the same result. That's what's important. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. really, if you want to take anything away from that alone, we got to where we went this. So we started here and then we got to here and now it's perfect. We're comfortable and We've been patient. We've done our due diligence. We've ruined books to get. <laughs> yeah, well, we've we've did it to get where we are. You know what I mean? These you know these guys that thinking, well, yeah, I could do this in like uh, you know, I had a, one of my students for my pressing and cleaning course. He took four courses and decided that's all he needed. Well, guess who calls me on a on a weekly basis or every other weekly basis asking me for well, how, well, what did you do here? Or I'm having a hard time getting the dirt and the boogers off the book. Well, why didn't you take another class? You know what I mean? It's not like I was charging $100 an hour. I was charging $35. And I generally teach them for like an hour and a half, two hours. You know what I mean? So, you know, I tell people all the time, look, if you're going to be a novice, don't bother. Because mm -hmm. novelty in this will get you in a lot of trouble. And you'll be dealing in a lot of pain because your wallet will going to feel the effects of the eye because it's all going to be low. The thing I see is that people kind of, they're kind of not good at it. They're kind of not good at it. And then they get a little better and then they think they're awesome. They think they've made that breakthrough and then they start buying the expensive books and then they get a little surprise at the end. I just got a giant size X-Men number one. Some guy claimed he'd done pressing and cleaning for 25 years. I hear that all the time. Yeah. I get the book. I got the book. It's in my store. It's in the back. It was shadowed like you would not believe. It was terrible. Now it, the cover's white. Right? But the problem is that when a guy pressed it, he crushed the spine. So by crushing the spine, he split the spine three and a half inches on the top uh. and an inch and a half on the bottom is completely ripped away. So... If that's 25 years experience, I might as well just, I should have retired 25 years ago. Because that guy was probably one of those guys claiming that he had done a lot and now he thinks he's the bee's knees and he's not worth bee's wax. So, you know, I, dude, I hear it all the time. Yeah, I got presses at my house. Well, why are you bringing me your books? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get the same thing. I, I, I never wanted to yuck anybody's yum, man. I don't do it. I, you know, I don't really step on other people's parades, but I see stuff all the time and people come after me and say, Oh, you're ruining books. You're doing this bad. That trying to tell me advice. And this other thing, I want to get your opinion on it too. Oh, I have one question for you first. I know you use the uh, salon care 30 or 40 as a source 40. of 40 as a source of peroxide. And I think that is 12%. Yes. In the bottle and use 40% of that, which I think is 5%. Absolute. Right. About five, about five and a half, almost six. Yeah. Yeah. I use, um, I use uh, 30, I have 38% peroxide. Uh, and so I usually use that at about 15% absolute when I use it. I rarely use it. I try not to use it. Uh, I, I, I'm with you. Like peroxide That's itself. Burn. It, it, you have to be. That. That 38%, man, that's a lot of burn, brother. It burns my hands. Like, I, I bleed yeah. from it. You yeah. got no finger, you'll have white fingertips. For about a few hours. But I've been burning my hands all my life with that stuff. Yeah, me too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've got, I mean, I've been, 
that and silver nitrate to turn black. But my, I have a trick where I use, I've used uh, potassium iodide to neutralize it essentially. So, and it shows you, it shows it, that stuff comes off in the light after a while, KI pellets, yeah. and then uh, it turns purple, but it neutralizes any excess peroxide. So you can, you can get it off of there real quick. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't, I tend not to like to use it because I just don't like to have the stuff in my house, you know, and uh, it's just nasty to have around in general. And I have other solvents and I have all kinds of, look, I'm not afraid of chemicals, right? Chemicals are, yeah. my, are my bread and butter, but I still don't, if you see me not keeping something in my house, it's probably something you don't want to have like 40%, 38% peroxide is nasty stuff. It's like it the really guy that wears is. a shirt that says, uh, I'm a bomb technician. If you see me running, catch up. So I'm, I'm, I sleep with chemicals in my bed sometimes when I'm <laughs> traveling. And so if you see me not wanting the chemical, you don't want to touch that stuff. Right. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you um, about uh, UV light. Yeah. You've been using a different UV light. So what do, what have you been using? Because I think our UV lights are different. You're using a different frequency. I've used many. Um, so there's a 395 nanometer to 405 I've been using. So that depends what you're trying to do, right? If you're trying to bleach paper. Uh, often visible light is better. And let me actually, I can share with you something that you might want to see. I think this will really, uh, there's a lot of papers on this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you one here. Let me share the screen so you can see. And I think this will be really, uh, and this this research goes back decades. Some people think it's new, but it is, it is not. Um, so here, this is from 1982, and it's a collection of much older, so it's what, four, gosh, is that 40 years old now? Yeah, 40 years ago now. And it's a collection of much older papers. About It's about lignin, about the source of yellowing in paper, and why does paper darken in light? And then why does it also lighten in light, right? And this has been sent to me by, by viewers before, but I've also had it in my library for a while. And down here, I'll show you, they collect a lot of other information, but this is a summary. It shows you that the observed effect of, radi of radiation you get like sort of a yellowing in this this zone here, this 360 to 365 nanometers. Uh, you get some kind of severe yellowing, it says here in this 370, 385, little slightly, yeah, slight yellowing, but also <coughs> whitening starts around 395, right? They say graying and bleaching, but right around the 395, 405, you'll start to see it get, you'll start to see an effect of bleaching. And then the big bleaching is in this, what they call blue area here. Um, in this band. And so you can see these curves. Let me see here, the reflectance. These are old, old studies, but you'll see, here we go. Let me see if I can find the frequency versus the, I think it's right here, right? Here's this one. It shows you that you get yellowing at 400 and below. And actually it's like 490. So right at, or uh, yeah, so right at 395 is the first bleaching you'll see. So that when the color goes down, it's turning whiter and it goes up here, it's getting yellower. So you really, if you want to expose things to color, just above 400 where it starts to be visibly blue is where you start to see paper bleaching. Again, I think this original paper is from the 60s and it references another one from the 30s. But my, so here's the trick. You can also accidentally bleach yellows, especially because it is you know blue and it'll bleach yellow right here above 400. So I try to use lights that are right about this range here because this range here, this 395 to like 410 area is the range that it's just going to start bleaching paper white, but it's also the least dangerous to yellows. Um, yeah, to yellow, to so bleaching the yellows. And here's the thing also, if you see the color profile, if I can find it, let me, um, I'm going to share another picture for you of how I've been working with this a plastic company in Italy. I wonder if I have it in my, I do right here. I'm going to show you this other one. This is my Slab Max uh, my, the screening I have in that that plastic thing I was showing you, this mm -hmm. is my filtering profile. So this is where my boards filter. They filter right at exactly just at four four. I think the maximum is like a four ten. So they're designed to actually every. So this is what's per, passed. Everything from four hundred above is passed through those slab max UV. This what you call the UV shields. Four hundred and below is completely filtered out. 100%. There's like nothing, it's like 0.001% gets below. And that, that steepness of this profile is very hard to get. And I paid a lot of money to get those uh, made, but that's what that looks like. And it coincides with what you're talking about, which is what frequency of UV. Now, you asked me what frequency I use. 
395 to 410. It's a good balance between saving the colors and bleaching the paper. If you really want to bleach the paper well, you'll go up to like 450 or 60, and that's in the color blue spectrum range. Yeah, but Another you're aspect, also you're also destroying the yellow pigments. Yeah, you can. You can. Yes, you're, just, you're 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 destroying yellow and probably some blue in that as well. Yeah, what you should know about the uh, LED lights, and I don't know if I have a. Well, my LED lights right now are about 402. So here's something that's interesting about LEDs, and I'll try to find this in a email I have here so I don't have to. I mean, not my LEDs, but my UV light that I use currently is at right. 402. Let me show you this. I've got something to share with you. I think that you'll find it terribly fascinating. And um, I'll try not to, let me see if I can. There we go, there's one. I'll open up a couple here so you can see the other one. And then I'll open up a third one. So these are the, I'm gonna show you the spectrum profiles of different types of lights to help you understand what you might want to use. Uh, here's a fourth one right there. And I'll just share with you in a moment here. Uh, I'll do my whole screen here, sorry about that. Luckily I happen to have these up. Um, so here's what I'll show you. I will show you, the first one here is LED. So here's a normal, can you see that okay? It's kind yeah, of small on my screen. Do. So this tail yeah. here that you see on a regular LED light, the blue is very strong on LED lights that we call white. And so some of those LEDs that you might put in your cabinet or your house have a tall blue tail, which can hurt, can actually bleach comic books. Because there's some, there's a this it's the 400s like right here, and there's a tail of it just in the 380s, and over time, an LED light is actually not good for colors. So that's that's that one to note to note that that you some some of you might see that. Here's another thing to note. Here is a uh, let me see. Here is a natural daylight bulb. If you had a natural daylight bulb, it looks like this. There's very little below 400. I think this is 400 right here. It starts to drop off dramatically. Like that peak was up here in the other one, it's, it drops off down very low. So if you have a natural daylight, if you have those bulb, like an incandescent bulb, it's very flat, doesn't have that huge peak. Then I'll show you another one, which is, uh, this is a halogen bulb. These are the kind that I have in my cabinet in my house. There's nothing down here. The halogen bulbs are, it's sloped just, there's no UV at all. It doesn't, it's like, you're not exposing your book unless it's from natural daylight. Uh, and then one last thing I'll show you is if you buy a daylight UV bulb, it looks like this is it. So this is, if you buy, uh, sorry, LED bulbs that are um, called natural daylight bulbs, they look like this. They have a much smaller, actually this peak area here is basically gone. They have a little tiny one down here, but it's a baby. And so that if you have them in your, in your home or in your cabinet or in your comic shop, I would say generally tend toward halogen if you can get them or with get, get the full spectrum natural daylight uh, LEDs because those ones will save energy and won't harm your comic books. And that's something to be aware of. Yeah, that's what my LED lights are in my store, our daylight LEDs. Good for you, man. Your books will also look a lot better. Yeah, they do. Plus, all my books now. Uh, use a two mil mylar sleeve instead of a regular bag. Um, I just, they're, they're so much clearer. You know what I mean? And, you know, I think they just, they really make the wall look much better, more conformed. So, you, you know, show us one of your slabs there. What have you got? I see some, I'm getting a little curious. I, I think I see a Spider Man back there. Is that Scorpion? No there's, no, there's no, there's no good books in this shop, Rick. Come on. You sold them all instantaneously. <laughs> No, I, I mean, well, if I'm going to pull a book for you, this one, this one you might like. That's what I was looking at. Yeah, I, you, you might like that one. There, oh, wow. Yeah, that's a good one. I have a copy of that, but it's got that, uh, like the bottom right hand corner. I've had it forever. It's torn out of it. Uh -huh. so been, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty one. You might like that. I got, I got, I don't know what other Spider-Mans I got. Um, I mean, I got a couple of older books here. This, this, this one you might like. For all you Daredevil fans, it just I got a, I do have a number eight for Stiltman coming tomorrow and a nine six, uh, nine four. Sorry, so that's nice. 
But yeah, this one, this one's really good uh, for as old as it is. Uh, Daredevil number 18. Oh, wow. First That's Gladiator, nine zero. That's not That too presents bad. really well, too. That really presents nicely. That looks really good. Yeah, so that, that's not too bad, but yeah, you know, I don't, I don't have too many good books in here, man. You know, I, I don't, I don't know what a good book is, man. You know, <laughs> has, let me let me ask you something. Has living your dream of having a comic book store has that changed your uh, flavor? How much you enjoy comic books at all? No, it's actually given me. Um, in all honesty, I got the first Kang. Oh, fun. Uh, uh, Avengers 10, is that right? Uh, eight. Eight. Yeah, it's only a three, five, but it's all right. I got a, uh, I got a really nice book. I got a um, Invincible Iron Man number 55, first uh, Thanos and Drax and, you know, the brothers. Right, and, right. Uh, Star Fox, which is pushing it right now, which I think is ridiculous. How is Star Fox going to overpower Thanos in a comic book first appearance? But it's a, uh, it's pretty nice. It's a seven five white pages. Nice. That's pretty respectable. No, I've actually gotten um, uh, more respect for it um, because I'm able to, um, I'm able to pass along more because I have a lot of uh, kids that come in here with their dads and their moms, which is something I really really enjoy. I had a a, a mom and her a six year old son come in yesterday, and. Um, I said, well, who's your favorite characters? And man, this, this little boy did not hesitate. He said, Iron Man and Doctor Strange. I mean, like that. I mean, he was on point. Which is so, funny because I mean, those two are like orthogonal, right? One's mysticism, yeah, one's polarity. technology. Yeah. yeah. One's technology and one's mystic. Yeah. But uh, so I gave him a... Um, a Captain America and... I mean, not a Captain America, a Iron Man and a Doctor Strange uh, for nothing. You know what I mean? Because nice. I, love to pay, I love to pay that kind of stuff forward. And, you know, being six years old once myself back in, you know, 1914, when I took that little trip. <laughs> um, Up the mighty Mississippi. You, you're damn skippy. And I didn't have no oars. It was all hands, baby. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, you know, I remember going into the pharmacy and, you know, and somebody giving me a book when I was five, six years old, you know, and you know, that, that really, it brings it home for me, to be honest. You know what I mean? That really brings it home for me. Um, I love, as you can see, it's just a wall of color. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I'll, I'll pick this up and show you, or I'll just move it. I mean, this is just one big wall and it just keeps going. I mean, that little small part right there, that's my DC wall, because I don't get too many DC books that people trade into me. But I mean, that's honestly what I have. It's just walls and walls of color. I mean, the, I guess the best thing I get when people walk in here is I only have 375 square feet from my front windows to my middle section where my wall is. And when they look at my wall or they look at my store, number one, it's extremely organized, very neat. And that's the way I wanted it. But they look at me and some people will say the famous thing that they all say is my wallet was not prepared for your wall. <laughs> because they don't expect a 375 square foot place to have this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? They expect like, Books thrown everywhere, some newspapers in the corner built up, you know, uh, you know, whatever, you know, that's what they're expecting. But when they walk in here, they're just like, oh, my God, man, what the heck? They just and that makes me feel good. That means what I have done was worthwhile. You know what I mean? And I get a lot of compliments. I've had one bad um, review on Google, and that's because. I, I told the gentleman, please don't come back in my store with an Ohio State Buckeye shirt on. And being an Ohio State Buckeye fan like he was, he took offense to that. And well, he should because I'm a Michigan fan and he probably didn't belong in here to begin with. But um, of course, and I, I left, you know, he, he, he called me, he said he was going to never spend a dime in my store. And being that they're from Ohio, I don't really expect them to 
to spend any money in my store. Anyway, I live in Florida where it's always sunny. Ah! <laughs> and, you know, but, oh, man. you know, I mean, I have my haters too, Rick, but unfortunately for them, I'm six foot six and I know how to throw these things. <laughs> so much but, they uh, can do about no. it. <laughs> oh, but man. no, it's, 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 it's funny to me, you know, when people say that, I have an ego or I'm overconfident or, or I'm a butthole. Uh, first of all, I could never be a butthole. That's number one. I'm a prick. I hang out out front, not out You're back. on the other end. <laughs> That's right. The opposite. And I do have an yeah. ego. Listen, I'm not, I'll be the first one to admit I do have an ego. But the things that I have an ego about are what I know the most about which falls into my confidence. Now, am I overconfident? No, but I am confident. I'm confident in my comic book knowledge. I'm confident in my pressing and cleaning abilities. And I'm confident in my manhood. And none of those things will I deny myself the pleasure of being. Thank you. Yeah, very good. I deserve an Oscar for that. There you go. That's that was well good done. acting there, pal. Well done. I'll say this. I, I like you. Um, this is I'm gonna, this is something I want to talk about too. And I, I'm going to do our last 15 minutes. I have a few questions for you. One is that I have I felt that some of the I mean I have avoid I avoid chat boards. I avoid watching other people's stuff. And I'm just focused on what I'm doing, which is bringing products to help my my goal, my mission is to bring things to others, education and materials, so that there isn't just this small group of mystic wizards doing this, that everybody's doing it so we can all get us. That's my goal. I'm trying to demystify it and take some of the, the uh, idolatry of worshiping these guys who are really good at it away from them. And they don't, some people don't like that. They resist it like a lot and they really don't like me for it. Um, but I want, I want, to get that to people what do you say what's the best way to do that john i know you're doing your thing you're training people like what would you do what's a what's what's a good way to help me on my mission would you say you mean to push people forward yeah to help help let's get more how what's a good way to get more people do better at this faster and to and, and also to demystify thinking that only certain people could do it because the biggest phone call i get from the average 38 times a week is can you do this for me? Because I don't feel confident enough to clean my $5,000 book. Look, you can only, it's tough, man. You can only teach those who are willing to learn. Anybody that has some kind of illness or an incentive not to and have that in their heart, you can't reach those people. You can't, because no matter what you do, no matter what you say, and no matter how much you prove it, they're still going to question you, right? So what I do is I teach the people who want to learn and everybody else can wait at the back door because I don't have time. I don't have time. I want to teach those who are willing to learn. And the best way to do it is just continue to do what you do. Because no matter how long you do it, and no matter how much you do it, we are still going to be cursed. Like I was 30 years ago when those same people that asked me to press their books today and clean them, you shouldn't do that. You're going to ruin it. So I still can't change some of their minds. And I'm not trying to change their minds. I've moved on to the next who wants to learn, who wants to be a part of this hobby as a whole, not just a small part, right? We deal in the hobby as a whole. We deal in the, not the restaurant. I don't restore books. I clean them and I press them. I don't add anything to them. I just want them to be available for your children, for my children, because these books, the paper quality is trash and you have to teach people how to keep them going and surviving until they turn to dust. And that's and great because you actually led me to my next question is 
And that, the same thing I say is like, if you're subtracting stuff, that's, that's not restoration. Maybe it's no, conservation, it but it's not, it's not restoration. I, I, don't, I strongly believe that. People have asked me recently, they said, hey, do we have an obligation to tell a grading company, CGC, CBCS, God forbid, PGX, any of those? Do we have an obligation? Here's what I say. I say, look, if they want to sign up on my website and give me 10 bucks for my cleaner's notes, I'll give it to them. I'll give them 10% of the time. I'll give them the wrong notes. I'll make them wait seven to 10 months. I'll make them sign into my course and they'll get them whenever they get them because that's it's not reciprocity, right? They CGC is not for the customer at all. They maybe they were at some point. I don't feel like I owe them anything. Those guys don't feel like they owe me anything. CGC is now a corporate bully. When they were bought out, they hired a bunch of kids. They trained them for two weeks on how to grade comics. And now some of these books are coming back that are way, way, way overgraded or whatever because they want to prove themselves that they can keep the job. Now they're giving $100 bonuses for as many pallets as they can clear out on a Saturday afternoon. Number two, I don't send books out to have them graded. You're not going to give my book to a, to a two-week-year-old kid who's just learning how to do this. He can go step and fetch. You know what I mean? I've been grading and doing this stuff for, I've been grading comic books for 28 years straight and I'm still learning. Okay, now CGC, PGX, CBCS, EGS even, um, now they're trying to stop guys like us by saying that the cover was cleaned underneath the marquee of the name. So if it says Eternals number one, underneath it'll say cover has been cleaned. Now, what, what the hell does that have to do with the price of tea in China? So what if we clean the cover? Did it come up on your UV scans? Did it come up under your black light? What? Because you see some lines and just knock it down a half a grade. That's the problem. People are cleaning their covers and they're not rinsing those covers and getting all the lines and all the residue off. I have pressed and cleaned thousands of books and I have never gotten a purple label. Oh, and for CGC sake, I have married, I don't know how, at least eight Hulk 181s with the Marvel value stamp. And I don't know, I, I don't even have enough fingers and toes to tell them how many ASM 238s I've taken the, and put the tattoos Stickers. back in them. <laughs> put the right. tattoos back in them. Oh, guess what? As long as the staple holes match, and there's no marks on the staples, they'll never know. So what do they really know? Is there, that's what I said, grading, pressing, and cleaning is subjective to the individual. Well, guess what? I'm an individual, but I'm a person who actually knows what he's doing. That's why they don't hire people like me, because their $100 to clear a pallet don't mean nothing to me. I'll tell them to go pitch baseball cards off of somebody's balcony because my integrity pal is not for sale and you either know, should theirs. You know, one thing I did notice too, John, is that uh, I, when I did a study of this plastic, I started getting, I started buying slabs and cutting them up, analyzing of infrared, testing them and melting them. I started to realize that this plastic is designed to do two things. One is to be easy to form, easy yes. to thermal form, right? And yeah. it's designed to be, um, it has high clarity. It's like 90, at 90, at 2% or 3% uh, light diffusion. So it's pretty clear. So it's, it's made with, they made slabs with themselves in mind, right? Yes, they put it because in. Because they know eventually you're going to have to send it back into them. And you ever dropped one from about five inches? <laughs> I've gotten them cracked in the mail before. I've received them like oh, that. It's pathetic. It really is. It, I mean, all, all they are now is money, money, money. They've raised all their prices and their quality control has went straight to the toilet. It's, it's plain as I can put it. And I'm not a CGC hater. I know a lot of those guys. And believe it or not, CGC offers a pressing and cleaning service. They do. But for those of you that don't know, I live 45 minutes from the Sarasota branch of the CGC, right? And 
I'm not going to drop any names because they're clients of mine, but I press and clean CGC employee books. That tells you a lot. I got, a hair. I got a hair in my Spider-Man 41, the Rhino. There was a human hair in that book. <laughs> I, was like, I, had a, I had a customer come in here with a 7.5 first tiger shark. What is that, Submariner 5? I don't know. First tiger shark? You had one, there was four hairs in that tiger shark. First appearance of tiger shark in a 7.5. There was four hairs. And they weren't in the casing. They were in the ceiling. That's exactly where mine was, the inner of the Mylar. It's a Mylar with, uh, they put a gluconate in it to make it like more flexible. Yeah. And, there, and it was inside that thing. So it wasn't even easy for me to like get an air thing and like blow it out or anything. I was like, oh my right God. Now their quality control. I was watching um, a guy's video. He got a, um, a real early, I believe it was Fantastic Four number six, second Dr. Doom, second Namor. And um, they didn't seal the top of the book, you know, to seal it in. And the pages were kind of brittle. It had cream pages. And some of the flex of the pages were actually escaping and going into the casing. And this guy's advice to, for the book was don't crack it because it's going to lose its 3.5 grade. You know what I mean? So what the hell are you going to do? Are you Are going to just let the book disintegrate because it's not sealed? Yeah, if it's just a bag of paper at the bottom, is it still a 3.5? Exactly. I mean, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be left with dust. You know what I mean? So, look, I don't understand the logic. I don't care about their logic. I don't care about their grading because even with telling the truth about what they're doing, there are those diehard CGC people and PGX people and CBCS people and now EGS people that no matter what you say and no matter what you can prove and have proven, we're still a liar. We still don't work for CGC. And what do we know? Yeah. I know I can tell you this though. I know a lot more been a punk kid who was trained for two weeks on how to grade my book. That I can promise you. That, that I can promise you. So that's why I don't send books off to have them graded. And that's where I will remain to do it. I will buy graded books all day. But I'll be danged if I'm going to go buy any. I mean, to go send any out. I have an X-Men 14 that I graded a seven. It's probably an eight. Absolutely beautiful looking book, bright red, but the way they're grading right, man, that could get a 3-0. And I'm not, I'm yep. not doing it. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'd rather somebody buy that book raw, let them send it out and have it graded, and then let them reap the rewards from it. Plain and simple. You know what I mean? If that's what I have to do, that's what I do. I, I yep. sell, I will put it to the general public this way. I sell more raw books than I ever do graded books. And I'll let you in on another little secret. I sell a lot of my raw books higher than their graded counterparts. Yeah, and it's I, hard. It's... And, I, and I don't know nothing. I don't know a thing. I've only been collecting since I was like 11. And it's like 40 years, almost 42 years this year. I mean, I've only been, and I started buy, selling, and trading comic books when I was about 13, you know, with my friends, you know, you read Spider-Man, I'll give you my X-Men, whatever, buying their comics for like 50 cents, a dollar, you know what I mean? So I've been doing this a long time. So, you know, there ain't no wool being pulled over this wolf's eyes. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I you eat know, that stuff up. You know, what's funny is to see this through my wife, you know, my wife, Heather. Of and course. So she sends stuff out to people and she, she doesn't care at all or, or know anything about comic books. People ask her stuff all the time. She manages my uh, social media stuff too. She's always asking me, but she asked me when the first time she saw a slab, she goes, so why would you pay more for a comic book that you, that you can't read? 
like, why does that have any value to it? She asked me this and I had to try, it took me a while to explain it to her. She still doesn't get it, right? She gets why we like certain characters. She does not understand this grading business at all. Like to explain it to someone who's just come into it is like explaining this, like a, like explain to a 14 year old how to drive a car. Like you got to do the clutch slowly. Like you're, you're trying to explain it. And she's just like, I don't know. I hear you saying it. It makes no sense to me at all to make it so you can't read a book. What it's basically you turn it into a baseball cart. Is that well, you know what? I you know I don't. You know some of my PC books I wouldn't have them any other way but graded. You know, and I'm I'm gonna tell you why. And I purchased them or I traded up to get them because they've been pressed, they've been cleaned, right? They've been read multiple, multiple, multiple times. I know the stories back of my hand, X-Men number 12. I don't need to read it. I've read it over 50 times. And not from a trade paperback, the real deal, Holyfield, right? And my A5 is graded. And the reason why it's graded, because I chose to grade it because I pressed it, I cleaned it, and I didn't want it getting any more damage. Yeah. And if I'm if I'm cover hunting, I can see it too. And I and I do have some of my books, but never my only copy, right? Because I got to tell you that opening the book and like smelling it, like once a year, I read an Amazing Fantasy 15, and opening that up, and then looking at the first time that Peter Parker like jumps up on that wall and he crushes that pipe in his hand, you know that like that comes over me like emotionally. That's a big. That's a 20th century history moment there for me. Well, I, I think, Rick, we've been doing it so long. I think, honestly, we, we're pulling the old Robert Duvall. We just love the smell of acid in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know, he was, you know what he, the other guy in Apocalypse Now that was, uh, I'm forgetting his name now. They were both in the same movie the same year. No, no, it was 10 years earlier. Sorry. They were both in Robert Duvall and uh, I forget the other guys. We're in the John Wayne True Grit. He was, he was one of the cowhands that John Wayne shot. And he said something else about loving the smell of something in there. So it was like a thing he's been doing for a while. But yeah. I got to go soon. But I want, how can people reach you, John? Um, it's easy. The Comic Book Underground LLC on Google. I'm in, in Largo, uh, Florida. So Google's the fastest way to get me. They can call me anytime. My phone number, everything's listed right there. Um, just, you know, just be mindful of where you are compared to where I am. You know, just because you're going to call me at midnight my time when it's only nine o'clock at night with you, you know what I mean? So I do have to go though. Um, I got some buzzers that are about to go off. So, um, and I'm being waved at through my peripheral vision. <laughs> but uh, listen, man, uh, we're going to set these haters. We're going to set these haters aside. We're not going to sweat them anymore because they're hating because they just don't know. Yeah. And remember yeah, I... anything learned can be unlearned. So those of those people out there who have these bad habits, learn from someone who's done those bad habits and got out of those bad habits and are only doing things the right way. Learn from those type of people. Then when someone comes up to you and questions you, you can walk away proud because you know how full of crap they really were. Yeah. And I say, don't yuck anybody's yum, man. Just, That's right, man. Just, you just say, thank you very but much. You, know, for your you never know, man. Somebody out there bigger than you might give you one of these to cross your lips. I've had a few. I got thanks, one fake thanks, tooth Red from Fox. that. Huh? <laughs> I got one fake tooth from uh, challenging someone on a parking spot one time. <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> That's right. Okay, brother. Right, Pleasure. Brother. Take As care. Usual, uh, say hi to the, the boys for me. I will. Take care. Love you like a brother. We'll see you, man. Bye-bye.